NFTs have been criticized for, let's say, not having the best looking art, okay? And that might be putting it lightly. For example, Vice came out and straight up asked, why does NFT art look so bad? The Financial Times claimed the real problem with NFTs is that they're ugly. And this article titled, Why Do NFTs Look Like That? starts off the article by saying, if you know anything about NFTs, you know most of them look like sh**. And even though I will grant that some of these collections aren't going to win any award for their aesthetic beauty, you can easily make the counterpoint that, you know, number one, obviously all art is subjective, but number two, a lot of these collections aren't trying to be fine art, right? They're trying to go viral or to have that coolness factor that you might get from comic book characters or video games. But just to get to the bottom of it, I did go to Twitter and I asked some of you, what were some examples of NFTs that you would put up as good profile pic art? We have these AI Nightbirds, for example, which use machine learning to remix an existing collection into these super trippy designs. You have Azuki, which easily has some of the cooler looking aesthetics of any blue chip collection, especially if you're into anime. And there are other great aesthetics like Crypto Covens and Boki. But now, now there's a new collection that everybody's going crazy for and this one's getting harder to defend against the critics because this collection is truly unapologetically hideous and that collection ladies and gentlemen is called goblin town which is a set of profile pics that released earlier this month for free and which showcases you know a set of high fantasy style creatures that emerged from this Goblin Town meme, which is another way for calling for a bear market. And Goblin Town is supposed to be a state of mind, right? It's a meme that people share when they're down bad and the markets are melting down around them. And now finally we have a visual component to it and it looks something like this. And guess what? People are getting absolutely rich off of them. At the time of this video, these NFTs have a floor price of 6.5 ETH or about $12,000. This has been one of the most insane run-ups of any NFT collection that we've seen growing faster than most other blue chips, except for maybe Moonbirds. Remember guys, this was a completely free mint and there were some people who minted, you know, double digit goblins and have held a bunch of them until now. Meaning that some people have made well into the six figures in profits in just a couple of weeks. So let's talk about why goblins have gotten so popular despite being as ugly as they are, what this means for the changing NFT meta and how you can use this information to maybe find the next big run up. Now, unfortunately, I stand before you as a broken man because I did miss the goblin train. This art was just a step too far for me and for better or worse, I try to buy things that I personally like and sometimes that means I miss out on money. Also, this came out in the middle of a peak degen season where most free drops were getting hyped up and dumped within a couple of hours, which made it even harder to differentiate. But if you were one of the people who did mint a goblin and even better, held it all the way through, and congrats, my friend. You are one of the chosen ones and you do deserve a victory lap. For the rest of us, we can take comfort in the fact that no matter how much generational wealth slips through your fingers, the like button is always gonna be there waiting for you and waiting for your gentle touch. But really, we can look back at this and learn from this experience. And actually, in retrospect, there are some clear signs that you can use to tell you maybe where the next goblins are gonna come from. So let's get into why goblins have gotten so popular and what that might tell us about the direction that NFTs are heading into. First off, if you've watched my channel before or any other NFT channel on YouTube, you'll hear somebody talking about the importance of the foundation founding team, okay? And that's because, you know, if you look at the top collections like Doodles or Clone X or Board Ape Yacht Club, the team's ability to execute tends to be an incredibly important factor. As a result, many people have sworn off investing large amounts of money into projects that have anonymous founders. First off, because, you know, they could end up being scammers, but also because you can't vet their track record and understand how well they can nail the execution. And it happens to be the case that Goblin Town has an anonymous team, which right off the bat should be a non-star starter, right? Except that in this case, it's a little more complex and here's why. So perhaps the first person who started talking about Goblin Town publicly was Mike Dudas, a venture capitalist who has become a fairly well-known figure on crypto Twitter. And although he often deletes his tweets, Mike made comments that he knew the team, that they were legit, and that they were going to reveal themselves soon. So therefore, even though the actual team remains anonymous today, this kind of endorsement by somebody who has a public reputation 
does de-risk it a bit because it makes it a lot less likely that they're just going to be outright scammers. I think this is actually a big point when it comes to, you know, whales being willing to drop five ETH or 10 ETH or more because they want to be sure that, you know, the founders aren't going to come out as outright scammers or potentially something much worse. Without that kind of security, you don't get these classic scenarios like the Sandbox game, which is a completely unrelated metaverse platform buying this Steve Aoki Goblin for 26 ETH for some unknown reason. Beyond that, this project didn't start as a typical roadmap collection where the founder, you know, has this checklist of all these things that they want to accomplish. And in fact, you know, the website outright says there is no roadmap, which means that presumably the talent of the team isn't as crucial as it would be in other projects. So on that point, let's talk about the roadmap or lack thereof. And you see, Recently, we've been coming from this breakdown in an NFT meta that was dominated by these collections where the founders would put up these blessed roadmaps about where they wanted to go. Many of these were ambitious and they would talk about metaverse land and merchandise and some of them even buying an actual Olive Garden franchise or two. But in most cases, these items didn't even materialize or when they did, they were poorly executed or they didn't have the desired effect that people were hoping for. It's gotten so bad that some people have rejected roadmap collections entirely. For example, this one collector on Twitter says, not gonna lie, I'm really sick of anything with utility. When I hear the words utility or roadmap, I just freak the f out because I know I have to join yet another Discord on top of the 50 I'm already on and check it every day in case I miss out on the next step of the Ponzi. Seriously, stop. As we've said on this channel in recent weeks, a lot of those collections miss some key ingredients like storytelling and fun. And when we look at the goblins, those are the exact two things that they're emphasizing, storytelling and fun. For example, while most creators would use social media to talk about what they're building and how they're gonna bring value to the community, the Goblin team uses social media to just enhance the world building. Twitter posts just gave more glimpses of this weird universe that they were creating, and their weird language was consistent across all their posts. The website would give clues through a dynamic smartphone that just kept updating with new lore, and they even stayed in character during their Twitter spaces, which would go on for hours with grown men basically making Goblin noises. <laughs> Yes, that's weird. Yes, it's kind of cringe, but it's also brilliant marketing because it had everyone talking about it. More importantly, it was a fun break from the norm, especially at a time when we're on the brink of a deep recession and people are generally not having a great time. And I want to stress this point for a second, okay? And I can't believe I'm about to pontificate about these damn goblins, but we've gotten this far, so let's just do it. In general, I think there's a new type of media emerging that combines platforms like Twitter with NFTs, and it creates a new type of storytelling. I think we've only scratched the surface on this but basically what happens is that people are spending more time on these platforms and creators are finding ways to combine you know platforms like twitter microsites and digital assets like nfts to raise the stakes and give the people ownership in this new media for example cyber brokers is a collection that uses microsites and these nfts to drive their storytelling and they use quests to slowly build up the lore of a dystopian futuristic world goblins are just another evolution of this idea and and in their case, they're leaning into the mystery and giving less away than most other projects normally do. I think at this point, most people are buying into goblins because they realize that something is being built here even though there isn't a published roadmap. And they realize that these creators are unfolding this story in real time and that they're very good at leveraging social media to gather and drive attention. So the takeaway from this point is that you do not need a stated roadmap to build a brand and capture attention. And in fact, having a roadmap for some people is actually an anti-signal right now. Founders should just be more creative in how they tell stories. And I wouldn't be surprised if Goblin Town, you know, ushers us into an era where we're gonna see a lot more guerrilla of marketing and just similar tactics to get the ball rolling okay now the final point we have to talk about with goblins is of course the art right we've gone full circle now is the art ugly yeah i think it's ugly but i also recognize what they're going for it's purposely ugly because that's the vibe and this has resulted in the meme feedback loop where the more the price goes up the angrier people get because something this ugly shouldn't be doing this well and this makes it funnier to buy in and drive the price up even more and make those people even angrier as usual when it comes to the internet the fastest way to make something go viral 
is simply to try to stop it, okay? And I think we're seeing some of that right now. The last note on the art is that it's CC0, which simply means that it's in the public domain, so anybody can remix it and make derivatives without fearing any repercussions. And so as a result, we're now seeing a ton of other collections that make references to Goblin Town, okay? And they're using that same aesthetic, but different creatures like elves and orcs and all this nonsense is popping up. And now imagine a Lord of the Rings style multiverse where all of these are interacting and evolving in real time and going up in price, right? Surely that's the worst case scenario for everyone that's still coping. And sometimes that means it's the likeliest scenario. Or maybe nothing happens, right? A new project comes out, attention shifts like it always does because I'm old enough to remember other CC0 projects like Cryptodes that went up all the way to 15 ETH and then crashed back down. We'll see. The point is that we can use this Goblins experience and realizing why it did well and update our own mental models for understanding why some NFTs go viral and others don't. Okay, and that's very important. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you the next video.